Hello and welcome to this video tutorial from cgcookie.com. My name is Jonathan Williamson and today we're going to be taking the light bulb from our light bulb modeling tutorial and expanding upon it by going in and adding all the materials and rendering settings to render it out as a nice scene. Now you will notice if we look at this that I've already gone in and modeled some simple objects, you know a simple fixture here with some screws and a pole chain and then just duplicated the light bulb and also added a ground plane. Now currently, if we render this, just render it at a small size, you'll notice that I've also set a uh, shadow only material to the ground plane and changed the background gradient just so that we have a very simple scene. Now again, this is very simple modeling and so we're not going to cover that today since we're primarily looking at the materials and the rendering. Now I'm also just using the default light setup that I have from my own Blender file, which is also available from the uh, from the three point plus lighting setup tutorial on CG Cookie as well. So if you're not familiar with that, please check that out. And then we're just going to go ahead and get started. So the first thing let's do, let's work on the light bulb texture. So, and to make this a little interesting, we're going to make this light bulb turned on and this light bulb turned off. But first, let's just get the glass done. So we're going to first create our glass texture, which we can select our light bulb, go to materials, and let's add a new material to this. So first I'm just going to delete this and add new. And we're just going to call this light bulb or bulb on. Or let's just call this bulb for now. Because we're going to use one texture and then we'll just change it slightly to turn it on. And apologies for the Skype there. But what we're going to do is let's set this to a, a slight, mostly clear, slightly yellow tinted glass. And, you know, as a lot of light bulbs are, just has a very slight yellow tint, or we could even make it perfectly clear. You know, that's completely up to you. And let's set the, op the alpha value down to about uh, 0.2 or so. And you can feel free to play with that however you want, depending on how clear you want the bulb. And it really comes down to, you know, are, is it a frosted bulb? Is it painted? Is it clear? You know, so the opacity value is not real important. It's kind of personal preference. So you can see that there rendered without the lights and then rendered with the lights we have just a very simple texture okay now let's go ahead and play with the specularity and the hardness get that a little more realistic and what we're going to do is let's just jump the specularity up just a little bit and then also increase the hardness just a little and so first let's go ahead and increase our render size just a little bit so I'll just jump up to 50 percent and hitting F11 we can pull up our previous render and then hit render again F12 to see it. This is just so we had something to compare it to momentarily in our head. Okay, that's looking pretty good. I like that. Now what we're going to do, um, the next step is to really add in what's going to make it pop. And that's gonna, going to be the reflections. And since we don't have a scene, which for those of you that aren't familiar with how reflections work, the the key to getting a reflective surface to look good, such as glass, chrome, etc., is to have something reflected in it. And since we only have a plain scene, we don't really have anything to reflect. If we were to set up our uh, ray mirror or the reflection really high right now, all you would see would be this blue and the gray. And you know you might see a little bit of the bulb and whatnot. But we can fake this real easy and give it a very nice transparent reflective look by using white planes or just set to a shadeless white. Think of it kind of like the reflective planes that photographers use to cast more light and reflections on their models. And so what we're going to do is let's just add a new plane, plane and let's scale it up Yeah, somewhere in this range and then we're actually going to go a step further and actually simulate a almost like a window effect by using four planes that have just a small space between them. And then we're just going to zoom in just because I'm picky and line them up like that. And then maybe let's make them not quite so square by just scaling these up along the Y axis. So you know you can think of window panes. And we'll maybe do that just a little bit more. Okay. And then we just want to add a shadeless white material to these. We'll just call it white planes. And this is just simply just change this over to a white color and then turn on shadeless right here. That means it just it won't change change tone at all. It'll just stay purely white, no matter what we do with it, no matter how much light we shine on it, etc. 
and then we're just going to move it over outside the range of our lamps and our cameras, scale it way up, and then you'll notice that I have actually two cameras set up, and this is because with my default setup, this camera controls my lights, and so right now it's acting as just a null object, and then this is my actual camera right here. And mostly that's due to laziness. But so we're just going to move it over just so it's kind of perpendicular to the camera. Make sure it's out of the range of our lights. Notice that our normals are flipped, which may or may not have much effect, but we'll just flip them just in case. And there we are. No, it still does not want to flip. Okay, in that case, we'll just flip it manually. And just like so. And that'll work. Okay, and now all we need to do is go in and on our light bulb, we're going to add in a ray mirror. So if you remember, our render looks like this currently. Let's add a ray mirror, and let's turn the ray mirror all the way up to, we're going to do, yeah, 0.5. And now let's see what this looks like. Now keep in mind this will increase your render time significantly. Okay, and we'll just let this render for a second. And you can immediately see the difference that we're getting in here. Start to see some real, you know, glass-like properties to it. And it even looks like it's actually reflecting real objects, even though essentially we're just faking this. So it's starting to look really, really good and we're almost actually done with the glass. You know, we're not going to do a whole lot more. Also remember that, you know, one of the other big properties of glass is the IOR value, and that's how much basically the glass has a lens effect, so it distorts everything that you see through it. Light bulbs have almost no none of this as they are very very thin. And so we can actually get away with not doing that at all. Otherwise, we would need to throw in ray transparency and would increase our render times even more. Okay. So that looks pretty sweet, and we're actually going to leave the glass just like that. We're not going to do anything more with it. You know, we might here in a little bit, but let's first go ahead and set it over to the other one. So we'll select this one, and let's just change it over to our bulb. There we are. We'll save that. Next step, let's go ahead and do our metal textures. So we'll select, we'll do this one just so that we can see it. And let's add, change this to a single user so we create its own material. We'll call this metal, or screw, and we're going to change this to a, you know, kind of a medium gray. And then the trick here that we're going to get, because we almost want almost like a brushed metal effect, is to use the tangent shading. And we'll, this will, you'll see the effect of this pretty quick here. But then what we're also going to do is let's go to the textured buttons, and add a new texture, and clouds. And then we want to set, we'll leave the noise size like it is, the noise depth, that'll be just fine. But then we're going to add a hard noise so that we see a little more distortion. And we're going to leave that like it is and go back to the materials button. And obviously, you know, right now, if we hit render, let's just do a border render by hitting shift B. Obviously, this is not going to look very good. You know, it's, I mean, you almost get this like electrical purple energy effect going on as you can, you know, if you were to add in some blur and whatnot. Not what we want for this, but it looks kind of cool. But let's go to the Map 2 panel, and we're going to change this over to a light gray, just a tiny bit darker than our previous one. So maybe we put this at, say, 660. Okay, just a little variation. And then we're going to scale it up along, I want to say it's the X size. Let's, nope. We're going to do that back to 1 along the Y. Nope. There we go. So you can see it going horizontal here, and that's what we're wanting. Let's go ahead and render it now, see what we get. Okay, first off, you can see it's way too reflective. You know, we're bouncing off way too much light. So let's go back. Let's turn the reflection, reflective value down. Do that, and then see what it looks like. Hey, that's starting to look pretty darn good. You know, if we look closely at this, We'll let it render for a second. That's a pretty nice soft metal effect, which we can increase by let's increase the specularity on it. Maybe increase the hardness just a little bit. Decrease that just slightly. And let's make sure we're not rendering hardly any glass and render that. 
That looks pretty darn sweet, just like that. Now, one thing that I'm going to do, just to add a little more variety, maybe add a little more depth to this, is we're going to play with a ramp shader. And so I'm just going to add a color band. And what I normally like to do is swap the position of each of these sliders by default. And then we're going to change the input to normal so that it's around the outside edge. And let's just set this to a dark gray. And now, for my plan around, what this should do is basically along these outside edges, and particularly in between the threads, it should add a little dark so that we get a little more pop to it. There we go. That looks pretty sweet. So you can see, let's just swap this. One cool feature in Blender that's not really well documented that you can't find anywhere is if you hit J in the render view, it'll switch over to the previous one. So you can actually store two renders in the buffer. And this is very, very handy. So if we turn off the color band and hit render again, we can do this, and then we can swap between the two. So you can see how that looks. I have to admit, I really like the ramp shader, so we're going to leave that back on. Okay, that's our metal, just like that. And so we'll go ahead and select our other one, add the metal to it. Oops, this is my old metal from playing around with it. Don't want that. Let's also go ahead and add the metal to our wires on the inside. Here we are. Now, we're not adding it to the filament, because the filament's actually just, well, no, that's actually not true. We're going to add it to this filament, because this one is actually going to be turned on. So we're actually going to make it just a single shadeless white. And let's go ahead and add the metal to our pull chain and each of our screws. Okay, now let's go ahead and just see this in at full size. So we're going to go and hit, I'm going to hit render, and then I'm actually going to pause the recording just so we don't have to watch this render. And so then I will see you in a second. And we're back. Now, looking at this, you know, for one, we still need to add a nice kind of porcelain clear white pl or hard white plastic to, to, to our fixture. But looking at this, I feel like the bulb is maybe a little too solid still. You know, maybe we're seeing a little too much. So let's go ahead and take the bulb and let's lower the op opacity down to, say, 0.15, just a little bit less. And let's look at this a little more and see what we want to do. Let's also add a slight re reflectivity or a reflection to the metal as well, you know, because it would have a very slight reflection. So we'll turn on the ray mirror and maybe put it at 0.1, just that little, little bit. Now, do remember that we will increase our render time quite a bit. Okay, so now to really get the pop to our render, we're going to go ahead and turn this light bulb on. Well, actually, first let's add a clear hard or solid hard white plastic to this. So we're going to give it its own material and we'll call it white plastic. And we're going to make it a solid white. We're going to increase the specularity a fair bit, but then increase the hardness basically all the way up. And we're going to put on just the tiniest bit of ray mirror. So maybe 0.05, just a little tiny, tiny bit. And that should actually just about do it. Um, we're going to go ahead and just try that. Let's just take a quick border render, see how that looks. And that looks pretty good. Okay, so we'll just leave that as is. That's not our main focus on here. The main focus is the light bulbs. So let's turn this bulb on. So first things first is we need to separate out our materials. So let's just click on the two, and we're going to call this bulb on. And what we're going to do is basically turn up its emit value all the way so that it's emitting light. And then we're going to take the filament on the inside, give it its own material as well. So we'll call this filament on. We're going to give it a solid shadeless white and also turn its emit value all the way up. And then let's go ahead and pull in this and hit render. And we'll see how this looks. Now for this, we can actually probably turn the, the ray mirror off when we get around to it, but we'll see how it looks first, just in case. So taking a look at this, that's looking pretty good. Now something else that we're going to be doing is adding in a, um, we will add a light, act, an actual light inside this tensively, so we get even more so, because that's looking pretty good, but let's maybe blow it out just a little bit more. So let's go ahead and with our filament still selected, let's hit Shift S, cursor to selection, and 
let's see. Oh, it turns out I've actually already got a light in here that I forgot to remove from the previous scene. And so that's looking pretty good, but let's go ahead and increase this energy up to 1 and see how it looks. Okay, so we'll hit render again. But the idea is that we put this light in here, change its color over to just a slight yellow, and then increase the energy. As always, I generally try to do these scenes beforehand just so I make sure that I actually know what I'm doing. Not that that has stopped me from making a fool of myself in the past, but that's all right. Okay, that's looking pretty good. Uh, let's actually even increase that a little bit more. Let's go to 1.5, because if you think of an actual light bulb, it's basically a solid white. You really don't see much of anything in it because of the blinding light. Now, we do like being able to see just a little bit in here. You know, adds a little more interest to it. So looking at this, that's looking good. Okay, hey, that's looking pretty sweet. Let's go ahead and just see the entire scene as is. Uh, one, one little tip, when you're working from the camera view and you shift B to do a border selection, if you do a shift B outside of the camera range, it gets rid of your border rather than having to go over to the render buttons and unchecking border. So then we can hit render and watch this whole thing. And we'll just sit here and watch it so we can kind of analyze it as it's going. As you can see, you know, we've got a pretty bright amount of light coming off of this, which is good, but then we've got this nice shadow in here, so it gives us a little bit of variety that we need along with in here. We can see the highlights coming down along here. This is looking pretty good. You know, we want this high amount of light off here because that actually shows that this is turned on and gives it a little more realism. And same with off of this. This is looking pretty good. Let's, we may be able to leave it right here. Just let it render just a second longer. Okay, that looks good. And looks good. I do particularly like how this is still slightly transparent here, so you see mostly the energy in the bulb right here. So that's looking really good. So at this point, you know, we can go ahead and leave this just like this. Something that I might suggest you play around with if you want to take this a step further would be to perhaps play with some ramp shaders, and you could kind of work on some ramp shaders on the, the bulbs themselves to get a little more variety, almost a little more depth to the glass. So that might be something to play around with. And other than that, you know, throw it into a full room, see if you can light a room realistically, and enjoy. So with that, I'm going to go ahead and render it full full view, pause the recording, and I will uh, leave that and enjoy, and I'll see you next time.